Dictatorship naturally arises out of democracy, and the most aggravated form of tyranny and slavery out of the most extreme liberty. No matter how you look at it, YouTube is a dictatorship. Sure, they've got flashy colours and bright lights, and they at least outwardly look like they're trying to be good corporate citizens, hence why we could perhaps call them a benevolent dictatorship, but a dictatorship nonetheless. Now I'm not saying that's necessarily bad, but their actions are that of dictators. Before I explain my reasoning, let's first look at YouTube the company. YouTube is owned by Google, which is owned by a company called Alphabet. Just to keep things simple, I'm going to refer to it all as Google, which is technically Alphabet's largest subsidiary. Anyway, as a publicly listed company, Google has shareholders. It also employs lots of staff. So what is Google's, and therefore YouTube's, main goal? to make money, of course. If they don't make money, they fail as a company. As with Google, YouTube makes most of its money through advertising. People like you and me upload videos and can become so-called YouTube partners if we meet the requirements. This entitles us to 55% of all advertising revenue associated with ads shown on our videos. YouTube keep the other 45%. Whatever you think of the fairness of this split, it doesn't really matter, but that's how YouTube make their money. Now back to my dictatorship argument. Imagine we have a set of scales. On one side is rules, and on the other side is freedom. YouTube, like every company, have rules. Lots of rules. They have a set of so-called community guidelines which must be obeyed by all creators. You can't post videos that include things like nudity, dangerous content, hate speech, violence, spam, copyright, privacy, impersonation, and so on. If you break a community guideline, your video will be removed and you'll get a strike. Three strikes and you're out. They call these community guidelines, but neither me, nor you, nor any other YouTube partner had any say in their creation. It didn't go to a vote. We weren't asked whether we agreed with them or not. We were just told, these are the rules. There are also advertising guidelines. If you break these rules, your video will be demonetized. That is, you will receive little to no advertising revenue from that video. Things like inappropriate language, tobacco-related content, controversial issues, adult themes in family content, and so on. I've had lots of videos demonetized. I don't get told why they've been demonetized. They're just demonetized. YouTube allow you one chance to dispute this, where you can request a manual review. Once that review has taken place, the decision is final. For example, my recent coronavirus video was demonetized, and there was no explanation as to why. I requested a review, and they stuck with their decision. No surprises there. No debate, no discussion, just demonetized. I presume it's because the video falls under the controversial issues and sensitive events category. But who determines what's considered controversial? Who determines what's sensitive? It's certainly not YouTube partners. YouTube partners are literally partners in name only. So back to these scales. To be fair, there's a bit of a balancing act from YouTube's point of view. Too many rules, and YouTube becomes a full-blown dictatorship. Nobody will want to upload videos because the rules are too strict. People will start leaving, and therefore YouTube will lose its major source of income its creators. Obviously, it's not in YouTube's interest for this to happen. If they become too dictatorial, this goes against their only aim — to make money. Too many rules will be the death knell of YouTube. But what about the opposite situation? What if there were no rules? Well, that would result in chaos. People would be able to upload anything they wanted to. I'm sure you could imagine the result. Every community guideline that we saw before would be broken in a matter of moments. YouTube would descend into a dark place that is no longer fit for human consumption. They'd certainly be taken to court for allowing such depravity and would have to fight an endless number of legal battles just to stay afloat. Either way, advertisers would flee. Family-friendly companies would not want to tarnish their images by advertising on such a corrupt platform. Of course, all of this would directly go against YouTube's one and only goal — making money. It is not in the interest of YouTube for you to have complete freedom. So what's left? Looking at the scales, there's basically a choice between freedom or rules. 
chaos or dictatorship. Both extremes hurt YouTube, so their only option is to try to find a happy medium. If they're too lax, YouTube will become a haven of debauchery. If there are too many rules, content creators will become fed up and start to leave. Both these scenarios hurt YouTube to its core, that is, they'll lose money. In the end, YouTube have no other option but to dictate the rules. It's their only way to continue being profitable. Unfortunately for us, we have to put up with these rules and accept that we have no power in this relationship. It's fair to say that YouTube don't want us to leave, but they also don't want us uploading anything we want to. Hence, dear listener, YouTube is a dictatorship. Perhaps a benevolent one, but a dictatorship all the same. Either you accept the rules and play nice, or you leave.